All right, so I uh, got good results with my espresso. I was thinking about using acoustic pumps, uh, which are just piezoelectrics that vibrate. And then push air one direction, as that's the only real way, uh, resonatively speaking, you can make along, you know, with the uh, the whole design of that pump, uh, like a valve, run, which is essentially the same as any other kind of Tesla-like valve, you know, so... It's a really nice little idea. It worked like pretty well. It's comparable to any other espresso, but it's not like better. It's smaller. It's a way to do it. Like you can measure an exact amount of water, and you can preheat your water. That's nice, right? But it's not really much better, and or really anything. It's just smaller. It means like in a little pico espresso kind of thing you can make it an automatic espresso maker that's really really small and that will be comparable in all ways to a standard espresso maker but what i did figure out is if i put one above and one below and then i have a preheating effectively run through sort of run through the acoustic above and then it starts to draw a bit of a vacuum and once it starts to run through that preheats everything and if you preheat the water of course it gets to the right temperature uh, faster more than anything then you're able to push and pull in such a way that makes it actually something that you can dynamically tailor very significantly pressure profile and acoustically speaking because now you can resonate it back and forward a higher degree of boundary layer reduction or you know pressure and, and reduction of channeling completely really if I'm being honest uh, you know pressure profiling as a flow rate and extraction method when it vibrates for the little tiny sizes of the grains they have it's more likely to extract and allow for more of the lipids to come out and be dissolved because they can be nano size but any and all other compounds really that you may want to have come out which is good okay so straight off the bat that's fine what i did it for was because i could use a turkish delight amount of espresso you know, size grind, really, really small and fine, and push much higher pressures at very specific intervals of heat with inside of the puck, while still allowing for it to go and flow through, and still pull the necessary extraction profile that I was looking for, that gives me more of the flavor I'm looking for. So... Because of that acoustic resonance of the pump, that's piezoelectric kind of acoustic pumps, both you know top and bottom, it means that I can choose to extract more of the lipids or this type of compound that reacts for these given frequencies at these given intervals, which means I can get more sweet, more fruit, less bitter, whatever it is that you want to do. In terms of that, of course, roast is what it is and the beans and the flavors that are there are what they are the chemical attraction you can get is what it is and since any and all flavor and caffeine and all that is just chemical stuff it allows for you to um, pick and choose the type of profiling of your espresso you get out and out uh, much in terms of your, your uh, ratio that you're looking to have and it can be small in the size of, of a little thermos, you know. Now, you can't pre-grind or do it, or uh, grind from that or do any of that. But you can pre-grind and you can preheat and all of that, which is fine. You can even put it on and, like, you know, just separate it and put it in your own little cup. I have a little, my, my uh, 
one that I wanted to produce was a little insulated uh, double, I think I ended up settling with a triple wall, a little insulated glass. That's a, well, it's not glass, but it's a ceramic on the inside, but then it's metal that's attached to that. <laughs> so it's like way less likely to break because I, I don't like how easy uh, glass is to break. But uh, <laughs> um, the, the main reason why uh, I wanted it is because I wanted it to be warm. I have no pre warming of the glass. You have to pre warm it yourself. So, like, that was the reason why. And then uh, it's supposed to go like up to max wise a full cup of coffee. That's like a six ounce cup of coffee. And I'm like, oh, well, if, if you're looking maybe for, for that, you know, but you can do it. But, I, you know, that's a lot of espresso right off the bat, you know. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, but it, it's able to do that. But uh, it's mostly for latte, you know, art, that kind of thing. If you wanted to do that, because now it's like, I can put this over here. You can change out your filters. It, you can put filters in the basket. You know, it not filters for the water, that is. Right. But, like, you know, but also put filters in there and, and for the basket and the coffee. And all of this uh, can cost very uh, cheap. You know, like, we, we want it to cost a decent amount, but not too much. I mean, piezoelectric, like, vacuum pump and, like, you know, basic, you know, pump pump, acoustic pump, right, is they're fairly cheap these days. Right, and it's just a water container. So I, you know, I know it sounds kind of rough to say, but it's like you know, it's not that expensive to do that. So, <laughs> and then acoustic resonance for a given size chamber, and a little bit of sneaky, sneaky electro resistive heating. You know, standard sneaky, sneaky stuff. Just some iron and some some ceramic around it, like electric burner stoves. You know is usually good enough, right, but it's just, you have to screw on the top, you know, okay, sure, whatever, but, like, it's small, it's compact, it's travel size, easily, you get astoundingly good espresso that you can choose the profile you're looking for, now, granted, that takes its own time and dedication in terms of the over amount, overall amount of data set because you have to get a data set. So it's like that means you have to get a whole bunch of coffee and then you have to run it through and you have to have different grinds from this grinder and then, you know, that kind of thing, right? So it's like this altitude, this grind from this grinder, this coffee from then. And then it's like that is really what that would be for pressure and uh, taste profiling, right? But like my sneaky way of doing it was I'm going to get brute force base level foundation stuff at various, you know, basics. And then it's, hey, customers, here's a fun little game with an app that's able to connect to your phone, to the, the machine. And this is what you're trying. And then if you say it was like this, that means we know about that. For this flavor and this day, uh, time and, and this, uh, you know, all the rest of it, right? that effectively helps more than anything hone it in even greater and greater and greater and then we can test our own self as well and then uh that's the scientific back and forth of peer review and and all that for uh the you know basic data set and then you don't have to connect it to the internet but it just basically updates your data tables if you do right and so over time, it'll get much, much better at getting more and more accurate with its given um, taste profiling, which is good, I feel. Uh, Turkish Delight is hard to do in terms of, of grind because it's really, really fine. And most people don't usually uh, have a grinder that uh, is extraordinarily capable of that. So... Um, because like Turkish Delight is ultra fine and it takes a really long time to do it. And usually they're, they're 
better done by rollers or flat burrs. Uh, conicals do gravity feed. Uh, gravity feed, if it's not like done properly, is uh, you know usually not going to do it completely the way you might want. So uh, that's really kind of where I, I ended. I'm, I'm I'm ending that kind of thing because I was like I was talking about my conical burr like how to mount it in the back. I think there's a reason why that that video is very very long. You should probably watch that, but essentially it's like a really long video about how I wanted to change a lot of the grinders to be more of like a sort of both roller kind of style ish where it kind of like um, crushes it that way, but also a standard like conical and flat sort of combo. And so what it'll do is it'll slowly round off a large amount of the grains, but they're sort of a, more of a ovaloid ish and they can still break. And there's a particle distribution that's mainly this but these other two to try and fit them in between the gaps and then as you tamp them and, and there's still going to be some fines and so on so it allows for it to, to get the right resistance but then it was like well okay sure but uh, you know I know it'll do it but is it going to be better than a standard espresso so I was like I need to come up with something that's better than that right like that's what my my whole thought process was i'm not even kidding like it was like well espresso has been done everybody has espresso and it's really good what they do i don't know if i can compete really honestly outside of like figuring out a cheaper way to do it that's very very good right that's my 50 dollar espresso and all that right and so it's like here's a way to do a grinder that's you know, always aligned and and very easy to clean and and like you know makes really good grind right but it's like, I can get into that market, and it'd be cheap the way I do it, but eh, is it better? You know what I mean? Like, I want to, I would like to actually be something that would be seen as, as really amazing, right? So it's like, well, a double pump espresso that's more for Turkish grind that's going to have a much higher bar than normal that has taste profiling now. That happens to also have temperature surf control, as it can change temperature dynamically, given that acoustic right uh, resonance right for the pumping, and then also allows for really high extraction level, provided that you set it up for that. Like it's really based upon what type of extraction that you want. Like, just really high extraction doesn't necessarily mean that you want to drink it. Yeah, 100% extraction of my coffee. Hmm. <laughs> it's a hundred. <laughs> I just got the grounds back. <laughs> there used to be grounds. There's no grounds. <laughs> there were grounds. Where'd they go? I don't. Oh, goodness. I don't know if I want that, <laughs> right? You know, but that's that's why I was talking about it because it's like, well, okay, acoustic resonance means like you could theoretically get to a hundred percent of that coffee is in your cup. Now, you know that's it's very emulsified. Like that's what that would be. It's like a very, very, very like almost down to individual nano sized chemical compounds, and that's what you're gonna drink now, right? <laughs> but it's like. That's just made a different type of grinder. <laughs> and it, you know, it's a grinder and a, an espresso. Or actually, I'd have to change this. You know, it would be fast. I, I guess it'd be uh, uh, and uh, light speed because like espresso is based upon espresso. It's like very fast, right? So it's like I need light. You know, hmm. you know, like it's even faster now. Even more extraction, even all the rest of it, you know, all the things. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I come up with some other word for it, I suppose, because it's acoustic resonance. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know if I want to call it the extractor. The <laughs> right, like. That's a good word for that. Give me a second. I'm going to pause this. Two, the, the number two, 
R C because it's a double rocket resonator coffee. You see, if you look at it from my perspective, it looks like a rocket chamber. I am firing it into a chamber as I pump it. I am then sucking it out even faster with my vacuum pump. And then it's coming out at the exact uh, right temperature and pressure and all that into your cup. Right? Which is atmospheric. Okay? Which means it's high efficiency for thrust. Right, it's a double resonator rocket, technically speaking, at that point, right? But it's a double rocket resonator, because that sounds cooler, coffee extraction, right? So it'd be a, a 2RC. Number 2RC. But like, it's a rocket resonator. So you'd be like 2 double RC, right? Or like, you know three three letters right and then one number right so two two double rc and it's, it kind of like rolls off the tongue right like it really feels nice a two double rc right that's what i'd call it it's a rocket resonator. it's gonna be a rocket like i for what it's worth i got the idea from my bladeless turbine which uses piezoelectrics inside of a given type of diaphragmic, um, you know, circle cylinder that as water passes through, it creates chambers for, um, you know, uh, fish and wildlife to go through and doesn't harm them, right? And I can put a screen in front of it. That means that they can just go over and around. If they get stuck, they'll eventually be able to swim off of it. And then the... The, you know, the fish can, you know, go about its merry way, right? Well, in this instance, for that given um, YouTube video, that turned into eventually I have a rocket engine because, like, theoretically speaking, you know, just because I can capture something doesn't mean I can't put energy in. And it certainly doesn't mean that I can't, like, continuously pump it with a secondary one, especially as that first one would then be, like, you know, sure, it got pumped in, but it also is able to burn, which then creates a acoustic resonance back towards the front, which helps pump it and cre creates a better and better, you know, and faster and faster velocity of pumping as its energy gets kind of like a turbine used, or a jet engine, to improve its intake velocity, right? But then it's like, well, there's something saying for the bell end, I can do basically the same thing and then have it come out even faster. So it's like, if I do that the right way, I can both pump it out, vacuum it out, because it'll go faster and faster, but then it also comes out in its version like atmosphere. But if you don't have an atmosphere, then it's like, it's as good of an extraction in terms of like a vacuum on one other side could really be when it's hot, you know, gases, right? Expanding. Well, in this instance, I'm not going to be doing it for hot gases expanding. It's just extracted coffee, espresso, right? But it's a, it's not espresso. It's, that's the coffee. It's two resonator, uh, rocket resonators, coffee, right? Like pour over or French press, like you French press coffee or pour over coffee. It's not espresso, it's two double R C coffee or two double R coffee, right? So there you go. I like the name. For me, the name sticking, that's what I'm going to call it. It's Xenon Reality Mind, John Tyler Limke idea. I'm John Tyler, that's my real name, you know. But. <laughs> That's what that would be. I'd sell it pretty easily, I'm pretty sure, because I would only need about 100 bucks to be able to sell it to anyone. These, a lot of the components are pretty cheap, and they'll last a really long time because they're very low maintenance. So as a result, it's like, yeah, they're pretty cheap to make. I mean, you know, electric, re electrically resistive heating, we have kettles everywhere. So I'm pretty freaking sure we can do that. I can do it around where the basket is. So pretty sure we could do that. And it's a battery that's effectively around the outside or wherever it is that you'd maybe in the lid or, you know, something like that. Or you can just plug it in with a basic, 
you know, USB-C type to a wall plug that would do like uh, the right kind of amount of watts and amps current, that kind of thing, which we have those because they're for some laptops that are pretty, you know, beefy, right? And same thing for pumps, so it's like all of that would be pretty cheap actually to make. Same thing for little tiny amounts of uh, the chips, like, you know, like a Raspberry Pi, right? But it's like, I don't really need it to be a Raspberry Pi level of like, like you know, like 8 gigabytes of RAM, or, or like, uh, not RAM, but uh, flash memory, flash storage, right? Which is just an SD card. Like, I can get like a 16 gigabyte little SD card, you know what I mean? And like, that'd be freaking cheap. It'd be more than good enough for what it is to run that. You know, and then, like, a little friggin' 8, 4 gigabyte little flash, you know, RAM, and then, like, you know, basic kind of bitch sort of style, small TI-82. I mean, like, I'd probably want to get, like, a decent, you know, cheap, like, my cell phone is not a flagship cell phone at all, and it's able to run all this pretty well. So, you know, an Android, you know, or something similar, level of cheap, buy in bulk, kind of CPU would be just fine. I don't really need it to calculate much, you know, for like the display thing, because that could be an e-ink display that'd be a lot less hard on like the amount of, of watts you're going to use, right? So uh, that's all I would really need. And battery wise, I wouldn't need it to do more than like a few shots, right? Because like, that's all it could really carry unless you want to do like big six ounce which then like that's again it's like a few instead of like oh maybe i can do nine of those right well now i've got like three <laughs> three actual six ounce ginormos i'll call them ginormos okay like a six ounce espresso is now ginormo <laughs> <laughs> all right now it's good right yeah like that's the ginormo yeah you want the ginormo you want the ginormo apparently okay they want the ginorma <laughs> right yeah <laughs> so that's what that would be uh if you don't think it would work that's okay uh sure fine whatever but like i know it would <laughs> like it's been um I've seen time and time again that a lot of people that tend to say that are just people that are usually upset about someone having a good idea and they didn't come up with it themselves or maybe don't know something. You know what I mean? Like, it's not to like throw shade, but don't get me wrong. There are a lot of times too where people can be wrong, Right. I just happen to be one of those people that are often not that, which tends to irk people. You know what I mean? Like, people tend to not be okay with the idea of somebody being very confident in one of the things that they're good at and talented and put a lot of work in because they didn't do it either their way or they're really gifted possibly in the mental side and even like piecing a lot of that together. The right way, but they are not necessarily a person that does, you know, whatever version of, like, in the trenches you want to go with. Which is normal, okay? Like, it comes with a certain type of, of um, attitude that you couldn't possibly until it's done, right? And it's like, oh, I'm not saying that it's, like, perfectly, you know, right now I've already got it, right? I'm saying I know for a fact that the concept will work. It's just going through and getting it done is basically all I'm looking to do. Like, I know it works. I know all of that can be sold for that cheap. I know it'll do it really well. It's just people often in the espresso world are like, no, I need to sell it for like two grand or three grand or something. And I'm like, nah, no, no, I can buy most of this in bulk and put it together pretty easily. In fact, it's not even that hard to get sodium ion um, types of uh, packs that could be built for this, you know, and truthfully, there's nothing saying that can't just be on your desktop or, you know, like whatever your countertop really is, right, depending on how you want to run that. 
Yeah, and then it's like just getting the right, you know, hand grinder for your Turkish Delight or espresso grind, whatever type. But I would imagine that a Turkish Delight would be the better one because then it's like more of a stronger puck that as you like try and force it through, it'll actually be able to, you know, vibrate as it'll create like that hydraulic fluid, like one to one. So it's a non Newtonian fluid and it can't get compressed. So like now it turns into like once it gets there, I can. And you know, get it through slowly until I guess the other side as I pull a vacuum to make sure that that's going through like that. And then I'm able to slowly help once it gets down to its version where I've already pulled the vacuum. It's going to slightly expand, right? It's going to try and fill that up with steam, right? That's normal. And then it will then slowly actually become pressurized as more comes through as I no longer pump anymore. Right, and then that slowly becomes a solid non-Newtonian like little liquid thing, and then I'm able to pump it and resonate it from one side and the other. Now, depending on how you do that, where you can keep a little bit of extra air pressure there, and then like that can help that until like eventually you're gonna slowly, and then it's only the water, and then you can get it extracting the right way that you want it to, right? And it then comes out to your cup because it's like, oh, it's got air. So, you know what I mean, right? Like, so, you have air anyways, anyways, right? So, I don't really see what that would be in terms of, like, an issue other than, like, well, no, the puck is now the diaphragm. And, duh, 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 duh. and so, like, that's measuring it off of both of them, that kind of thing, which is really just, like, programming it over time with enough uh, sensors and data and detecting over uh, enough experiments that you'd be able to get to the point where like now it does it the right way that you're looking for. And so like that's the recent development cost in prototyping. But it's like this is what I would sell it for because I could easily hit a market, blitz the damn thing, make a fuck ton of money. And like everybody would have to get on our level and we'd be the main one that everybody would trust. Which essentially means, guess what? I'm uh, and whoever else is probably a millionaire. <laughs> and why would you want this or that? This is so easy, is what you'd hear from the regular people. This is like, like there's an experience, okay? Like first and foremost, <laughs> right? And I'm on on board with that. Like for what it's worth, I would be on board fully on that there is an experience to making good espresso all that like there's a routine and a ritual and i like that but like for another person that wants this just done and like over like i go and take a shower you know what i mean and it's like all right so then i got out and it's like my espresso is ready okay uh, uh, but my two my yeah my my two double r is ready my two double r is ready rest and relaxation this is probably what it's going to end up heading towards. My two double R is my rest and relaxation. You know what I mean? So, that is the cool concept of the espresso using uh, two acoustic pumps for extraction that are rockets pumps, effectively, at that point. And it'd be pretty darn efficient because uh, piezoelectrics are 90% efficient. Which are really, really good at that point, right? And electric resistive heating is also really, really good because it's like 90-something plus percent efficient, right, for electricity conversion to heat. It's just making sure I get, instead of just on the bottom and around the sides, I get a nice little radiator kind of thing that I can push a basic, you know, uh, you know scrubber through that's for like bottles or like um, straws. That will heat it up a little bit more quickly, right? Which is essentially just a grid with with it running through around. Yeah, because that would be pretty easy to do. And an e-ink is, they're cheap. E-inks are cheap. So, like, all of it would be fairly cheap, readily available. It's just getting the parts together, programming, and getting it every you know, all around data set value done and research developed and, and figured out and then marketing and all that. All right. Uh, like and subscribe. Please, uh, you know, 
share this. Uh, have a good day. Bye.